Hello, thank you for inviting me along. My name is Beth. I work for the Northern Ireland Environment Link, which is the umbrella organisation for the environment sector in Northern Ireland. We work in many different areas, such as education, climate action, heritage, sustainable foods, agriculture and policy. Today, I'm here to present to you on our social prescribing project, Heritage for Health. Today I'm going to talk about the Heritage for Health project overall and this will include an overview of the social prescribing relevant to this project. Heritage for Health is supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and delivered in partnership with Healthy Living Centre Alliance and Northern Ireland Environment Link. It's a new and innovative regional model combining mental health recovery with natural recovery. It's designed to bring direct benefits to health service users whose mental health has been adversely affected during the pandemic, and at the same time, to involve more people in accessing our natural heritage sites and activities. It's based across Northern Ireland in all five trust areas. NHS England describes social prescribing as an approach that connects people to activities, groups and services in their community to meet the practical, social and emotional needs that affect their health and well-being. The delivery of social prescribing projects is different for individuals' health and needs and different groups. When I talk about it today, it's in the context of the Heritage for Health project. I'm going to show you a short video from the Spring programme, previously delivered by the Healthy Living Centre Alliance. This animation explains social prescribing in a more creative and concise way than I ever could. Health is impacted by a wide range of factors, including our housing, education, nutrition, work, the quality of our relationships, and our connectedness with the community in which we live. Social prescribing takes a wide view of our health. It looks at the whole person in order to appreciate and understand. There may be things affecting our health and well-being which are not always medical. Spring social prescribers are operating throughout Northern Ireland and Scotland and are here to help and support you. A GP, healthcare professional or pharmacist can make a referral on your behalf to Spring Social Prescribing. The social prescriber, based in a community-led health organisation, will contact you and spend time exploring what matters to you and which activities and local supports could improve your health and well-being. You can co-create a health plan and choose which supports you would like to try. That might be taking part in talking therapy, walking groups or outdoor activities, exercise classes, yoga, tai chi, arts and crafts, or helping you get the right advice in relation to housing, benefits or finances. The social prescriber will provide you with support on your health journey. Social prescribing is here to help you on the pathway to better health and well-being. To find out how it can work for you, contact your GP, healthcare professional or pharmacist today. Social prescribing has a benefit to the individual, the health service and the community. When social prescribing works well, it helps to alleviate the pressures on our health service and saves time and money. The service user is referred to social prescribing. This referral could come from a GP, healthcare worker, social worker or signposted from other organisations. People can also self-refer to Heritage for Health through the Healthy Living Centre, through recruitment post posters, social media or coordinators. For this project, all of these have been pathways onto the programme. For example, I had a community health worker contact our organisation Facebook page, looking for more information and asking to refer a, a client. I was able to direct them towards a programme which was outside their area and they wouldn't have known about otherwise. 
Once the project is underway, it is hoped that participants will see small and increasing outcomes for themselves and their health. This is measured through Outcome Star, which I'll come back to later. Through the spring programme, for example, outcomes and benefits have been recognised by health professionals. This video shows Dr Malloy describing the benefits of social prescribing at his practice. A uh, newish idea, but it basically what it has recognised is that the traditional model of delivery of healthcare is not really working. A patients attending doctors and being prescribed treatments is um, not alleviating the ongoing increase in costs on the health service and there has been a recognition that uh, alternative models of care are needed. Social prescribing therefore is a good method by which doctors and um, other health professionals can refer to coordinators who look at the overall picture of a person in their own homes and their own environments and suggest methods whereby they can interact with the communities. Um, such services would be um, just attending um, a service in the community to um, provide exercise, um, even to just get social interaction with other people, um, perhaps specific clubs for um, illnesses such as diabetes where they can interact with other people with those problems and try and learn um, in a peer um, support type manner. So it's looking at the overall picture of a person, um, putting a package together for them that doesn't rely on you know, prescription medications, referrals to hospital, um, and it therefore increases uh, the patient's self-reliance, the patient's well-being, and uh, uh, the, the, the benefits to the whole community. And obviously, the attraction to the health service and the reason why money is directed towards it is, is hopefully it reduces uh, people's reliance on statutory health care. Involving social prescribing and the, the overall um, package of the care allowed these people to get back into the community, integrated in the community. These particular people attend you now the, the gas yard site where they do exercise classes. They have developed um, good friendships with people. And I mean, whenever I look at several patients in particular, we just see that the number of attempts is that the surgery here has decreased quite remarkably. Heritage for Health follows the same health session guidelines as the Better Days Pain Management Programme, also delivered by the Healthy Living Centre Alliance. Health sessions are delivered by anchor facilitators or external facilitators on sleep, relaxation and breathing, nutrition and take five. The project has two part-time coordinators working with 10 healthy living centres located all over Northern Ireland. We have at least 10 heritage partners and some groups have worked in conjunction with more than one heritage partner. This may have been due to timings, availability or access needs to be able to achieve what they wanted for their participants. I've put 150 plus participants and um, this seems to keep on growing. Currently we're at 191 participants. Um, we had suggested 15 participants per group but the Healthy Living Centres had such an interest in this project that they have, some of them have up to 20 and 25 in their group. If it's within budget and they can accommodate it and the participants are getting a meaningful experience, then that's okay. 20 sessions of delivery. Some of the feedback we had shows that combining sessions has worked really well for the groups and they'd like to continue doing this. Each session is a minimum of 90 minutes, but some groups have reported back that they've ended up spending half days and full days out with their groups. They have enjoyed it so much. 20 sessions could take up to 20 weeks, so it's a big commitment and it's designed to have and show meaningful engagement. We have 10 anchor facilitators for the project. It was important for the project and for the participants that consistency of the facilitator was throughout the sessions. This means that the same health worker has the understanding of the individual's needs and health issues. The heritage facilitators or the team member may be changing. That depends on what's being delivered on that day or that week. So if it's a tour, a talk, a visit or an activity, that help heritage partner could change. But the participants still have the same health facilitator throughout. Participants surveyed so far have a wide range of health and well-being issues as the reason for taking part. 
Some of them are unexpected, but I'm so pleased that they're able to access the programme and get the help that they need. The survey included the key areas we expected, but the range is much wider, including cancer, bipolar, bereavement, arthritis, among many others listed here. The project delivery is based on Take 5. This is the Health Services Guide to Health and Wellbeing. Be active, connect, take notice, keep learning and give. These lend themselves really well to Heritage for Health by getting outdoors, meeting new people, taking notice of heritage and the natural environment, learning about the heritage themes and connections with nature, volunteering and giving back to help heritage and nature recovery. I have been really impressed with the heritage partners the Healthy Living Centres have made and that they have been working with. You can see here the 10 main partners and their localities, but I know people have branched out and visited other organisations and locations too. The sessions that I've been able to visit, I've been so impressed with. So much has been packed into the session and so much has been achieved in a short space of time. Anyone I've had the pleasure of speaking with who's participating is really enjoying and getting a lot from the programme. The health facilitators are really starting to see the benefits of engaging with heritage. Even the photographer and videographer that we have on the project have given great feedback and interviewed some of our participants and partners. On the films, the positivity about the programme is also reflected. As an insight of some of what has been happening and to celebrate how diverse the delivery has been so far, I have some of the group's photos and some of the professional photos to show you. Every healthy living centre that we are working with has a different delivery. It's just a different approach. It isn't a project template that everyone sticks to. Every location have a different approach to suit the participants and the local heritage. Some locations have tried new things and when other groups have seen these, they've wanted to try the same thing, such as cold water therapy or a heritage quiz. Many healthy living centres have taken their delivery to the heritage sites and had movement, music and health talks in the heritage buildings. Sessions have also followed trends such as cold water therapy, forest bathing and foraging. And the delivery has navigated around the seasons and the calendar celebrations. I have been out at some of the heritage sites to attend the delivery and have enjoyed getting outdoors, visiting the heritage sites and taking part in activities. We have been warmly welcomed and witnessed so many positive experiences and engagements with the groups. Photography and video is a really great way for us to see how the group are enjoying the programme and capture them taking part. Expressions, connections and the surroundings, whether that's through built heritage or the natural heritage. Alongside the visual evidence, we have a front and end survey based on the Warwick Edinburgh scale and the Northern Ireland Environment Linked Social Prescribing Toolkit. Through the project, we have been able to train all of our facilitators in Outcome Star, which has allowed us to measure all of the health and well-being outcomes, no matter how small, and the achievements the participants have made on a personal level throughout the project. Each healthy living centre will be completing at least four case studies. Case studies for heritage and health are different things. I realised this quite early in the project, that the health sector talks about a case study as a person in a more scientific way. For example, this 55 year old case studies blood pressure decreased due to this project. But for the heritage sector, a case study is more about the stats, how aims and objectives were met and the learning and engagement achieved. So we've combined the two and we'll provide the facilitators with the templates so everyone comes back with consistent information. This is something to bear in mind if you're working on health and wellbeing projects yourself. I've incorporated a facilitator survey. We wanted to find out from them how the project has been. 
This will be based on the same themes as the participants were asked about. Heritage for Health is a new departure for all the health workers, but they have been commenting and reporting back how well it's been going for the group, um, but they can see the benefits already. My concern was that this information wasn't being catch, captured anywhere officially, which is when I introduced the facilitator survey. We are using external evaluators for this project. Alongside the professional video and photography, our anchor facilitators are excellent at posting about the project, especially photos, which is great. So often I'm at my desk coordinating the project and it's lovely to see all the photos coming through of everyone enjoying the delivery. I've also recorded our first ever podcast talking about the project so far. This included case study information and interview sound bites from facilitators and participants. It's hoped that these will act as audio case studies and highlight the project long after the funding is finished. I think people are more likely to listen to a podcast than read along with a case study. It could widen our reach and our participants can also enjoy them. While we listen to a little of the podcast now, please scan our QR code, which will direct you to the podcast. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts. So even looking at it from that point of view, it's something that people have known throughout history. Now, obviously our reliance on medication is a lot more and it's more available to us. So people would have been doing things like going to live at the coast because there wasn't the medication that maybe they needed then. Or going to the sun, but we'll not get much of that here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Northern Ireland has so much history and heritage sites that we can uh, learn from and use, um, both built heritage and environmental heritage. And we're so lucky to live in beautiful surroundings with green spaces and blue spaces on our coastline. Um, it's scientifically proven that green spaces and blue spaces help with your health and well-being. It's really a new departure for the health facilitators too, but everybody is reporting back that they're really enjoying it. They talk now with a passion and an interest in heritage about locations that they have visited and engaged with through, through the project. And of course, the benefits of social prescribing have to be a personal highlight for me. Hearing how the project is impacting lives in small and big ways can have a real lasting result on people's health that go far beyond this project. Some of the findings from the project so far include much higher interaction with men than the likes of the Better Days project. And we think that that's because of the heritage theme. Many people surveyed so far, which is only about half of the participants, highlighted an interest in heritage and an understanding of the importance of the natural environment. We hope that this will continue to increase as the project goes on. Surveys on health can be difficult to gauge as how somebody's feeling can change day to day and they could be having a good day or a bad day on the particular day that the survey is done. It seems like a lot of our participants went down the middle for some of the questions on how they were feeling, so we hope to still see that increase. What the participants expect to gain from attendance is rated very high on what we are delivering, which shows a positive direction and good potential for an increase in improving health and well-being. Some of the feedback that we have received so far includes um, our Heritage for Health group just had an amazing evening right on our doorstep. This project is a new departure for us, but these sessions have left us in no doubt that health and heritage are excellent bedfellows. Excellent idea, absolutely amazing day, fantastic day, loved all the history, we'll visit again soon. Absolutely fantastic. As the project isn't finished yet, I don't have the survey data to be able to show you the outcomes in visuals. I do have some feedback from some case studies on individuals, which I think it's important to share because at the heart of all of this work are the people who are involved. It was through the Curish Association oh, okay. that I, I received the information and signed up to come along to the group. And how are you finding the group? Have you felt that it's helped you and what you need from the group? Have you been enjoying it? 
Yes, I've been enjoying it a lot. Now, uh, today was the highlight was the cold water immersion, and that's something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. And it lived up to expectations. And uh, the lady that led it, she was very knowledgeable and knew your stuff. I really enjoyed it. Okay, and have you felt that there's been any benefits to your health from far from attending the group just a couple of weeks that you have been here? Uh, yes, well, this is the third week now, and it is the the mindfulness, the taking a moment for yourself every day. You know, since I started that, the group have started to do that and take a wee bit of time for myself, uh, usually first thing. I say I live about 15 miles away. Come down here for the day for the club that I'm associated with on the Monday, and to see the history so close on our doorstep is very fascinating. I went down in the Robinson Centre, and you know, to see your able and touching distance of books that are so old, it was you know, it's. I would say to anybody, if you're in Armagh, take the time to come. You know, just you well, know, any sites here is only two minutes. Of I have gained a whole new experience of heritage and what it means, and have learned to appreciate the natural resources on our doorstep. The model of the star helped to break my life issue down into separate areas. This facilitates planning. One area and only small changes at a time. I have reduced, but not removed, some of my pain medication. My diet has improved partly because this extended course kept well-being at the front of my mind. Going on the heritage outings has given me a whole new outlook on the heritage around my local area and surrounding areas. Going to places I did not know were accessible to me, which I have enjoyed so much, was some on my doorstep that I did not know existed. I recently read some feedback which mentioned that one of the participants enjoyed a talk about the reintroduction of red squirrels at one of the heritage sites so much she now volunteers there and continues to work on red squirrel conservation.